Welcome, Final Fantasy Randomizer fans, to the Final Fantasy Randomizer Summer Co-op Tournament 2023 Race 2 between our brilliant teams here. No prep, no practice, and I apologize, I forgot the second team. Wow, that's a great intro. My name is Thavian Hawk. With me in the booth today is Red Mage with our restreamer, uh, Lord Fizzleby. Red Mage, what do we got here and who else is playing? I think it was the Crime Ring. Am I saying that right? I will go with you. <laughs> um, yeah, there it is. Lord Fizzlebeef coming in. All right. Um, so yeah, Fighter's got the Telemagic. Thief's got plus 20 Vitality. Red Mage, plus 20 HP. White Mage, plus 5 Luck. And the Black Mage's got the Improved Kitty Cat Claw. Well, we can see from the parties on the screen so far, waiting for the start, that we have multiple Thiefs. Uh, what else they go? That's the question. I'm gonna guess the fighter red black or red white. What do you think? I mean, I like a red mage, but um, you know, uh, yeah, the, the only reason to really always go with the white mage, right? Was the, you know, you want to make sure you get exit and, you know, then you get fade and improved harm and stuff. But with the fighter having the telemagic, you can, uh, you can make sure you have exit and warp, so... Yeah, um, that is that is huge because the idea of early ice or maybe poking marsh, even though it's not incentivized with these flags, uh, having that warp or exit to get out and save yourself. That is, that said, we also do have save on death, so if they die in a dive, they do not lose their experience or items, which is huge. Hmm. Plus, the uh, tavern mode is on, so if uh, they find some really good early white magic and they want a white mage, they can uh, swap it out, right? Indeed we do. I do believe that replaces the, uh, does it replace the churches or hospitals or whatever they were called? Uh, or is it a different believe, building added? I believe, I believe it does. I believe it's in there. I don't know if it, I think you can do both. I'm not sure. I've never played with uh, Tavern Mode on before. Likewise. Uh, we got the old Proc Gen Waterfall. And the uh, swapped stairs, so I'm gonna be confused a lot. Indeedly do. Lord Fizzlebee, our restreamer, also chiming in saying, yes, it does replace the clinic, but it does not remove the clinic's ability, so you can still just revive a party member. You're not forced to swap it out, which would be hilarious. But uh, <laughs> yes, we are not forcing that in our on our racers today. That would be hilarious. I would love to see that. Ooh, stuff. And we go. Uh, looks like we got a kit equipment, including a bane sword, scimitar, saber, wood, wood stick, and an iron hammer. Only two of those rolled down. That uh, bane sword early is very huge. Also, the chain armor and silver ra or bracelet, pretty good gear. Looks like we got white, black, and kuma. Yeah, it looks like we've got some shuffling of entrance and floor. I didn't know that was something on this flag set, so uh, our Blafane, or our or Carnaria is evidently Gaia. What? That's awesome. Uh, looked like Carnaria Castle went to uh, Titan's West, uh, as I look at my compass. And that hint giver said Lafane had the, or Lafanians had the bottle. Or is that just... The bottle is in Lafane, which would mean whatever at is at Lafane is the bottle. We'll find out. I never remember that. Well, at least we have hint givers and level eight nuke. Ooh, you hate to see it. Well, now they know. <laughs> That's true. It's better than looking for it all the way and then finding it in Gaia. Looks like Space Drake going straight towards uh. Well, on her on rack instead of the uh, dwarf cave. So we've got cities and dungeon locations. That's just that much more fun. And we'll have another look at the other level seven magic with uh, Bane. It looks like. Yeah, Bane and confuse, and then fear yeah. and cure too. So far, nothing that they want except for nuke has been removed from the from the pool. Actually, warp, but looks like they've got oop. Uh, Canaria Castle has been found. That was at Matoya, I believe. As is one of the Cardia Treasure Islands, although we do have a ruby, it looks like, out of the king. Oh, nice. 
and Titan's l West is uh, Canaria Castle. I totally missed. Oh, that. So the tower is down at Northwest Castle. All right. Yeah, Northwest Castle looks like is a vertically flipped Sky 2, or was that Sky 1? It's a Mirage, sorry, right? That's Mirage 1, yeah. I always get that confused. Makes sense. One leads into the other. Marsh Cave looks like it's, uh, what was that? One, uh, somewhere uh, in Waterfall. Uh, yeah, I believe that's TFC, or is that, oh, uh, yeah. that's either TFC or, or Kraken Swarm, but I believe that's TFC, because that bottom chest would only be there. Yeah, it's TFC. Yeah, that's TFC. <laughs> Man, I just missed that hint giver and on rack. It says something about the ship. Wouldn't you like to have a ship? And an opal bracelet plus five pulled out of that Cardia treasure trove. That is a huge we... item. Now I get to see how we got the Cardia. Oh, that was a Temple of Fiends. Yeah, Kumo running the uh, interesting food name there. He's got a slab of ha or a leg of ham to or shank of ham, whatever it would be. To uh, give to the Titan as a uh, space drake gets bombed out of TFC by some uh, very high-level seafood party pack members. Yeah, this is just dungeon diving for for fun stuff. And hope you come out with something good. Meanwhile, Jesus the Frog has been continuing the walking around of uh, Mirage 1. <laughs> And Odoron finds that Canaria is where uh, normally Provoca would be. So we have level 1 magic located. This is huge, because uh, we've seen many a time where these shuffles have been... Level 1 magic was somewhere on the Onrak continent, for instance. So that's a uh, harm for, exit, and cure for. That's stacked level 1 white. Yeah. Yes, it is. And the, the white mage in uh, good position there. And Ice 3 Black level mage. 1. Yeah. Definite power for the Black Mage, so we got sweepers for both casters. That's what you like to see. Um, I didn't see if anything good came out of the Mirage Tower delving that uh, Jesus the Frog was doing there. And Hint Giver telling us that the cube is in uh, Northwest Castle. Now, to note, we have multiple lo her, uh, loose with this, so not only are they confused as to where everything is just from when they go in to where they go in, uh, they might find something in an unincentivized location. Hey, we have uh, Elflin's is actually Bahamut, which is huge if they remember that Bahamut's trope oh, is on. Yeah, right? They could just go get some free junk right now. And meanwhile, it looks like we've got Sky 1, the actual Sky 1 this time, as uh, Elfgoon Castle. Well, let's see what it provides. An eye, it seems. <laughs> it looks like they're going to take a few pot shots and uh, call it a day there. Yeah, Space Drake not having been to Provoca, which is actually Car or Canaria, to get the uh, magic for level 1 casting would have been nice to have given the situation uh, Kumo go ahead and using that ruby from the from the king or in their case ham uh, to unlock the titan's trove non incentivized but that's four easy chests and then a path out to see what is titan's east or where it leads yeah peace some gold some gold what x stick Power World Kill the Stick, and a canoe picked up out of Sky 1 right side, and a gold minus. And the crown! <laughs> and the that crown. is a, a stacked set of equipment here. That's... you love to see it. That is access <laughs> to Crescent Lake, Volcano, and Ice Cave, with Ice Cave being incentivized. 
Well, at least it will be. And hey, what do you know? It leads straight into the crown turn in. We have found Astos. Yeah, just what hit him with that Bane has, sword and, and uh, get on with it. Bane sword, quad, S, uh, quad X stick. I mean, plenty of options. Space Drake opting space not to uh, make that play. I don't get why he's not, because he might as well take the fight, because dying to, uh, to that fight might be faster than running it out, and I think he just realized that. <laughs> yep, Meanwhile, Odoron... In, in Crescent, wherever Crescent was. I missed where that was located. There's the cube for Odoron, and... He's just the frog there. Astos has Blaze. Uh, that, that's an easy way out of the... In level 6 we had Brack, and uh, I believe... White Magic, we had uh, Heal... A for A Mute and Invis 2. Canal. That is uh, access to the Outer Sea once they get the ship. Now, Space Drake and Kumo do have the intel as to where the crown turn in is, but it looks like Space Drake not going to bother trying to deal with the crown right now. Um, I missed what Astos said he had, which means it's not that big of an important item just yet if Space Drake's giving it up for now. Uh, he's going towards uh, Crescent, as uh, Kumo, having made his way through the Titan's Tunnel, Crescent is Lafane, and the Earth Cave is, well, Melmond. So, Weird. that works. And Space Drake actually making that check. We do not have the Superstore on in Lafane, so until that translation of the slab is done, there's no reason to go back there. Yikes. Minus the hint giver in that left-hand corner, but a uh, few people think that. Now, I know as Kumo is over there, I'm assuming Titan's East actually was either Titan's East or Melman, because those are the only two possibilities it had. It would be hilarious if it was vanilla Titan's East. You know, I, I think it was. And we have Proc Gen Water... Yes, oh, okay, no, Melman. Melman. Huh, okay, that works. Proc Gen Waterfall located at Volcano for Space Drake. Oh, nice. Looks like he's trying to work off an encounter there to manipulate the encounter table a little bit. Ooh, that is a Flame Shield plus five out of one of the Cardia Horror Treasure Troves and an yeah, Opal Helm plus five. That is solid armor for the uh, fighter. You also even have his Aegis Shield for promo later. And that fire shield can be moved over to that thief as a ninja if that gets promoted. Ice and armor as well. Yep, yeah, plus four ice armor out of that uh, earth cave floor. Checking earth TFC because, well, we have loose and it could be there. Yeah, checking a place always feels bad when something's loose. Jesus the Frog checking Bahamut's Horde because he remembers Bahamut's Horde is on, saving him the dive who's going to get the uh, gear he hasn't picked out of any other Horde locations. Uh, are empty. Which he picked clean for the most part. So he got all but one of the Cardia Isles before going to the Horde. Oh, alright. That's true. Yeah, the Bahamut's Horde is every single chest from the Cardia Isle treasury rooms linked to that area behind Bahamut. So, having gone to those Cardia treasure rooms, that uh, eliminates them from the Horde. And there's, there's the ship. ship! Out of a volcano, what was actually the Proc Gen Ice Cave? That is outer sea access for Kumo and Space Drake.
Meanwhile, Jesus the Frog is in uh, Sky 1, so he should be picking up those... Uh, what was that? The canoe and the... Crown and canoe. Crown? Yeah. Meanwhile, Odron gets the horde from Bahamut, so that's pretty cool. There's the canoe. Oh, and there's the cube for uh, Kumon friends. That is huge to find. Germadusa fight. That'll uh, yield some pretty good uh, XP if they can take it. It's like... At this point, none of our racers really seem to be wanting to take too many fights for grinds. Yeah, it Running... looked like he was trying for a minute, but then... There we go. I didn't catch what Astos had this time again. Well, hopefully Astos will die, because Jesus the Frog is substantially equipped for this fight. Going with the fractured attempts, Ice 3 doing some good damage. The old cheeky Brax strats. Harm, Ice 3. There we go. And the Blaze hits. Oof! But the Black Mage stands tall. But gets paralyzed before it can cast anything and poison stones it. There we go. Astos is Astos after all. What? It's. The... Oh man. That. Oof. That was painful. But it's a reasonably short walk in to get there and there's no harm other than uh, time wasted in a race, so. The fairy Ooh. has the floater. That is huge intel out of that Lafanian hint giver for Odron. Very huge. I don't think I saw Space Drake make that check. We know where Gaia is, so the moment we get the bottle, the uh, erasers are going to have access to the floater. He's and the frog this time. Mops the floor with Astos. Gets the cast, gets the kill, gets the Oxy Ale for the trouble. Sign of ice cave, marsh cave, or ordeals, though, right? Well, the time of getting out of the inner sea is coming nigh for Kumo and Space Drake. They just have to get one of them has to get back to the ship, which, if I remember correctly, will be an elf or will be at Elfland Dock. That sounds right. And uh, his Frog finding the Bridge of Destiny. Oh, unrunnable fighter. Oh, yes, we have an unrunnable setup with a base chance of unrunnable encounters equal to the base game, up to double. <laughs> so there, there's going to be a few fights that they just cannot take. Also, now, Odron gaining them the ship. Now, there is a consideration here. I understand why Hastings the Frog is doing this, because he does have the Bane Sword. He is going for the Cheeky Strike. He is going oh, for the Oh, you got kill. it. Also, And Elfling? the Brack Shirt. Oh, Brack gets it. That's huge. Oh. You'll Me love to see it. Meanwhile, uh, Space Drake checking out Ice Cave is actually Elflin. So we have level 3 and level 4 magic. And that is a pretty solid level 3 black. That was Ice... There, that was uh, Lit 3 Temper Aquatics and Ice with uh, Life 1 at level 3 as well. We do have Life in Battle, specifically Life 1, so no full Life Restore with Life 2 in Battle. But even then, that is a Life Cast, which is huge. 
Yeah, and at level three, that's night learnable, right? I didn't Indeed catch Indeed it is. And, I didn't uh, catch the position. But... Uh, I believe it's knife learnable, but uh, it is level three, so it could should be. Uh, harm three, ruse, also good on level four white, with fast and zap at level four black, also huge to find. Oh, yeah, fast. It's one of the ones you're always looking for. Odron out. Ooh, that is the crystal for sale in Elflin's shop. And it is expensive. Oh, 20k. I did not see how much cash uh, Odron has in his piggy bank right now, though. I believe it was somewhere in the range of 9k. Uh, 35k. Well, 3500. Uh, oh. Oh wait, Odoron. I'm oh, sorry. I was looking at Space Drake as super soon shop. Okay, Odoron has the mat has the money to get it potentially. Just buying it should be uh, up in experience gain, if not to up in overall. They're up in uh, locations, but not knowing where it is to turn in just yet. And that is the Oxyail for Kumo and Space Drake. Kumo remembering to use exit to get out of there. Definitely wants to save that run back. Interesting. The boat is not at Elfland, so it would have to be Provoka just as a generic fallback point. I've never been fully aware of... Oh, no, it is Elfland. The boat is at Elfland. And uh, Kumo, now hearing that from Space Drake, is going right back there by resetting. <laughs> He sees the frog going straight to the crystal. No? Did he not buy it? I didn't think we found... Uh, did we find her? Oh no, I mean he... Game? Just... I thought he was going to buy it. Oh. He walked straight to the item shop. Uh, looked at it. I will have to catch his inventory to see. Yep, they've got the crystal. It is in uh, Oberon's inventory as well. Oh, alright. Difficult to keep track of these sorts of things. <laughs> Indeed we do. Please pardon the tracking informations. We have a combo of tracker and... Oh, that was the Oxy Ale at Onrak, which is actually Elf Cave that led to the t er, to uh, the Bridge of Destiny. Ah, oh, very good. Uh, Lord Fizzlebeef in chat saying both teams have the crystal. Thank you very much, Sir Fizzlebeef. Lord of the fizzled mind and the beefy goodness. I, I don't know if that was a good thing to say. I'm going to stop now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure appreciation was, uh, was felt. He's just the frog. Feeding the ham to the titan, who is happy now. If I remember correctly, this is going to lead them to the canal, which will get them out of the inner sea. So, titan's east goes to... That's the where sage, Crescent was. Yeah. And that is where the sages have the... Uh, the uh, chunk of landmass removal tool. <laughs> map removal tool. They have map edit as a function. They are a ring of sages and they chant and combine their magical power to lift a chunk of the world out and throw it into the ocean. Or two of Onrak is loot. Good to know. 
I didn't realize Onrak had a second floor, so that would be the loot is in Onrak. And Onrak is a second floor. Technically, Sea Shrine would be the second floor of Onrak if you considered it normally, but uh, yeah, that's the Bridge of Destiny, so no. Or is it a Sea Split normally? Sea Split. And oh. Kumo is making our first jaunt someplace outside the sea by boat and checking out what our deals is, and it is Provoka. We have found level 2 magic and some pirates to bash. Pirates that will give us um, some tasty item. Meanwhile, Space Dock is checking out the Cardia Isles with that dock on the two or on the dual island, so you can get two entrance checks here. Still looking for that floater, which uh, we got a hint for is uh, behind the bottle. Maybe we'll get it here. Nope, we get Bicky a slab from the pirates. We do know where the Fane is, and we know where Melman is, so we have uh, a route to get that slab turned in. Yeah, we can dig up some sort of incentive item out of uh, the Fane. So. Ice we cave see. in Onrak, so floor two has the loot in there. Oh, that makes sense. Ice Cave is incentivized, so it could actually, since floor two would be the drop down, that means that there is a loose in Ice Cave that is that. This is wild looking. <laughs> Floor 2 of Ice Cave. Poem! I that would be a loot. Assume that's the loot? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for confirming that. I was, uh... A little weird. Oh, another thing to note, uh, you'll note, normally there is a spike tile there. If you haven't noticed it thus far, because they're running this uh, map randomizer, spike tiles are disabled. Oh! As uh, Odoron and Haste of the Frog are both out of the inner sea, they are both doing the same things that uh, Kumo and Space Drake are and have been doing, getting the Ice Cave and Melman dives taken care of, or Provoka dives taken care of, and that is the Rod coming Ooh. out of Ice Cave. They know where the Rod Lock is. Oh yeah! And here's the loop! And the slab! And the parody across the teams. <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, Space Drake just uh, coming up to the drop down to grab himself a, uh, a rod. And uh, Odoron getting the hint about uh, Elfland having the crown kind of late here, but also finding Fade and Life 2 at level 2 white. That is totally night learnable come promotion. <laughs> Black magic, not so great, but hey, the white magic made up for it. Level 1 Cure 4 coming in handy for Jesus the Frog. Half his party was stoned. Improved cure that can fix status ailments is extremely potent. Yeah, very, very helpful. And at level one, you get plenty of, uh, plenty casts. Hey, so, er, uh, Lord Fizzlebee's in chat noting that all four of our loose have, in fact, been found. That is huge. Uh, uh, yeah. Kumo getting the uh, translation on the slab as his teammate Space Dock does get that rod. 
And this is coming up pretty even. Space, 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 space Dog. I meant Space Drake. Space Dog is a very good YouTube channel, personally. I believe uh, everyone should watch it. <laughs> Meanwhile, hey. Jesus the Frog has found uh, Sharknado Floor, and uh, his teammate Odoron has found Earth 2. Oh, correction, that is actually uh, Earth 4, our Earth Armory. Let's see what goodness uh, comes out of that clump of chests. Well, we know it won't be an incentivized item because the only incentive locations left, uh, we have the Turdens for the Elf Prince, the Blacksmith Lafane, which we will see here soon, Matoya for that crystal, and Narek to turn in for the TNT, uh, Ordeals when we find it, Princess Sarah when we rescue her, and uh, Sarda and the Waterfall Robot. Oh, we've seen the Waterfall Robot and uh, the Sages. I need to make those notes on my records. Now, yeah. Fall Robot was the uh, ship, I believe. Uh, yes, and the Sages was the canal, or was the canal. He's just the frog fighting Lich. Harm four. 264 damage. Ice three. 46. Ice magic doesn't usually work too well on the undead, but hey, that is a temper coming out along with harm four, which does work very well on the undead. Yeah, and, and that'll do it. Uh, bye bye speed bump for Jesus the frog. That's two orbs lit for Jesus and Odoron. With uh, Space Drake about to take that uh, fight with Lich to get one orb up for the team on their side. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to bully Lich Ice Magic for fun. <laughs> Lord Fizzlebeef making me laugh in the chat. Thank you. Oh, and that is Sarda located by Odoron. Yeah. Here we go with an item. Herb. Have we seen uh, Elfin Castle yet? Uh, no, we have not. Ooh. And if I'm not mistaken, Odoron was just in uh, the Mirage Tower there and didn't need the chime, which means some fancy place is chime locked. Indeed we do. This is a new flag in the randomizer just recently added. The chime lock, which would normally only allow you access to the Mirage Tower if you had the chime, has been shifted to a random location around the er world. So if they don't get that chime, they could just bonk on a random cave or Cardia Isle entrance or what have you. Because why not randomize even more annoying things? Personally, I believe they should randomize a door in Sea Shrine and make TFC one of any other doors. That just sounds terrible. I also believe a flag should be made that puts the uh, caravan from the Caravan Desert location and uh, moves it to a random store location in any one city. And then that random city is at the caravan location? Nope. The store that it replaces at the caravan location. And that is the bottle. That's the bottle. Lufanians, which is the ship ax or the airship access. Just a run back to Gaia and a run to the desert gets them in the sky. And Hastus the Frog, using that proximity, right there, gets into the air. First runner <laughs> in the sky. Oh, wait, what am I saying? He is there waiting as his He's teammate waiting, goes yeah. with the bottle to get the floater. Using the time to do some menuing. Good use of time. Get that over with. Go, go, gadget teamwork. Waiting for that trigger between the synchronization of the two, em or two uh, emulators. 
And you there you go, you see it at the top of the good. screen. That uh, red text that's barely legible is uh, alerting him that the bucket, the shared item cache between them, was updated with the floater. And hey, Gaia <laughs> is actually Toph. As Odoron picks up the float or turns in the floater to get his own airship, Hastes the Frog frees Princess Sarah and uh, moves on to some searching just for items, it seems, because note, we still need the key, we still well, yeah, the key and some orbs to get into Topher and win this game, but there are no more loose, so uh I mean a loose ribbon would be nice to see. There's two more or there are two of those, and they're also looking for maybe a katana or Excal. And Odoron finding ordeals as well. That is a incentivized location. Yeah, see how well these uh, pillars show up for him. Indeed, we do. That Space looks Drake like finding Kumo the cube just... block, and uh, that is Sarda. Oh, nice. Kumo also in Lafayne, I think, grabbed the. Uh... What was in there? The bottle? Yeah. Indeed, we do. So, Kumo yeah, there it has is. the bottle. It is now synced across to Space Drake's side. Space Drake is going to either go and do the turn in just like uh, Odoron and Jesus the Frog coordinated, or it looks like Kumo might just be going there himself, whichever turns out to be fastest. Oh, most definitely. Kumo is uh, on the way to get that turn in. Jesus the Frog picking up the chime over in uh, Matoya's cave, which was in Lafayne. Gotta love it, but hey, now that uh, random door they might bonk into isn't a door they'll bonk into anymore, because it'll have the key, essentially. Rhyming unintended. Odoron getting closer and closer to figuring this out, and it's the Saber Bonk. That is a huge value, because uh, getting any sort of buffs at this point, always value. We do have level 3 temper, but more buffs is more buffs is better. Yeah, levels are not something I've been able to keep track of with the, the four screens going at once. Indeed we do. That says just the frog enters uh, ordeals to go get his own saber bonk. Odoron is doing some quick diving through the Agma floor. We're gonna check a few chests, but not go all the way out of the way. Uh, given the fact they know they don't have any incentive items to find elsewhere, but uh, still checking more than enough chests, because again, they really do want those ribbons. We have not seen the incentive ribbon yet either. No, nor have we seen a tail. Well, knowing where Bahamut is this early, they really want to get that. That is the Saber Bonk picked up for Jesus the Frog as well. No pro ring. Sky maze. What do we got past this here? Well, that was interesting. I just realized Kumo the Frog or Kumo actually went all the way up the river system to Ice Cave to do some shopping in Elfland while he was waiting for Space Drake to actually go turn in the bottle to get the floater. So now Kumo is going to have to float all the way back down to get the uh, airship as uh, his teammate is dealing with Car with uh, freeing the princess. So both teams up in the air and moving around. Odoron and Jesus the Frog still a little bit ahead on that, having already completed most of those things. Yep, and teaming up to deal with the Cardia Isle checks. Ooh, Odoron finding Marsh Top. March 2nd. The uh, bottom... Yeah. Oh, is it? 
Yeah, that's Stupid the one with the lean to The everywhere. princess has the key. That is huge find for Space Drake. That means they are orbs to go mode. Forget also, to you can just effort. come around the back and unlock a few things. True, true. Now, we do not have incentivized Cardia treasure or Carnaria treasure, so this is just good gear, potentially. That Weir Sword isn't exactly horrible, plus three. And a Katana, but... beep. Minus two, but still a katana. It's yeah, still a the crit katana stick. is uh, always good to have around. Uh, Kumo on the incentive floor of Marsh. Was that Marsh two, three? Uh, that. Oof. Oh, what was that? What had that Bane? That is Marsh Bottom. As uh, Odron is now on Marsh Top, and uh, Jesus the Rog is working his way towards the Vampire Fight. On Vampire Floor, finding the Adamant in Marsh. Wow, that is an... I thought Marsh wasn't incentivized. Interesting. Oh, Marsh Cave is incentivized. Well, that is the adamant found for Mark, and that is a uh, space Drake finding the uh, or finding the witch to get the turn in, and that is their chime located as well. All right. So at this point, it is uh, technically go mode for Kumo and uh, space Drake. It is not go mode for Odoron and Jesus because they have not gone back to check with the princess and get that key. The Funny tail... to see both of them in uh, Volcano over there. Indeed. The tail is behind the TNT and Adamant in some form of turn and chain. That is the second Katana scene. One out of Marsh Bottom. I don't remember exactly where the other one was found. But, uh, yeah. And Flame plus five armor. Excellent pickup out of the Volcano Armory. Always nice. Anything else good coming out of here? Everybody's got their fingers crossed for that luscious ribbon. Space Drake checking that top left diagonal floor chest that I do not believe Jesus or Odron did check. Uh, finding uh, well, an axe with some rub action it looks like, otherwise not much. We're on finding a sky floor that I'm not familiar with. That was the bottom of Sky 3. The uh, control room at the bottom. Oh. oh. With the fun chairs. Indeed, we do. He is currently directly below CC the Gambit. More or less. But he's uh, taking this fight, really wants to get that experience with these whiz vamps. They can hit hard, but uh, so far not hard enough to worry him because he really wants that experience. And he's gonna get it for his party as Kumo is checking the idol or the uh, Titans east or west, finding C split. Nice, taking a minute to jot that down. Anytime. Ooh, we've got dwarves. That is huge knowing they have the adamant in hand. I'm expecting lazy dwarfs leads to the tail and we will be done with our incentives. Jesus the frog going up to talk to the king and the princess. Or is it just the princess? Did I miss the uh, king? They doesn't... talked to the king, but the princess uh, is the king. Right, right. The they must have was... the king the first time. Yes. And that is the tale from Narek. Nice. That is it for our incentive items. That means that when they find the elf prince, that is going to be a turn in for the ribbon.
and Jesus the Frog doing an overworld grind and finding blue steak in the area above the desert below the parking or the airship parking spot to run to ordeals. I'll draw and pulling a dragon plus two out of CC's Gambit. Not a bad find, but not an Excal either. Very true. Speaking of, Kumo and uh, Space Drake could promote. They have a katana, at least one of them has a katana. Uh, get some good armor equipped on the party, good weapons. Odoron seeing more of that interesting entrance shuffling around where the entrance into that uh, first floor of Earth decided to be at the bottom trident at. Or just. Why? <laughs> I mean, right? Titan's I like, Hall, oh Hall of Giants doesn't exist with this flag set, so I'm not gonna bother. Just gonna go straight down, see what's next. As Kumo finds uh, mermaids and a rune plus five, that is a huge find. That is a very, very powerful sword for many of the fiend fights. Not the most powerful, but so far I think it's the best sword he can swing at that night. And an ice shield, very good equipment. The rune sword strong towards spellcasters, right? Uh, yes. Kumo finding a Bane Sword. Already kind of had one of those from the start. I'm turning in that herb. Getting that ribbon. Getting that ribbon. Looks like it rolled neutral, so we get to see the whole word. And meanwhile, Haste of the Frog getting that adamant. That is the turn in chain to get the TNT and the tail, and that will put them in full hard go mode. Did Kumo or Space Drake um, promote yet? Neither of them have promoted, and uh, neither of them have gone back to fight. Ooh, that is a ribbon in sea or in uh, mermaids. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, that was in Bubbles' room. Uh -oh. She's blocking the door. Kumo, you know what you need to. Kumo, come on. Unless you're Roger blind. <laughs> And that is promotion unlocked for Jesus the Frog and Orderon when they get out of their respective dives. Hopefully Jesus the Frog does get that search into Matoya or into Mermaids and uh, does find that ribbon. It's a little deep dive from where he's at, but uh, nope, nope, gonna bail out immediately and go promote. Unsurprising. My brain was thinking just go straight up to get to Cardia Isles, but nope, this is a randomizer. Cardia Isles and Bahamut is actually an elephant. Yeah, so you get those two seconds of where is he going? And Space Drake finding the volcano bottom floor entrance Ooh. at the top left corner, but uh, that is a kill on to our fire fiend, Mrs. Carrie, the snake lady. Hopefully coming up, which would bring them into orb parity with their opponents. Meanwhile, Odoron has pulled up to uh, Kraken. And Kumo is going on the Bridge of Destiny to try and take out a... a... a Tia... Is Fiend fight a clock for our, for our racers? Is indeed. Now I did not double check if we have a if we're only going three or if they need all four orbs to get into uh, Toph. I've been seeing many races with that limited orb account requirement. I believe all four yep. are required tonight. Yep, Lord Fizzlebeef in chat confirming our uh, restreamer. Thank you very much. It is in all four, so 
all of our racers will have to face all of the fiends. Obviously, only one of them needs to face any one of them at all, but uh, that is a kill on Kraken. That's oh, three orbs lit. I had given them the water orb instead of the air orb, and now they have both corrected. And that is a fight for the fire fiend and the air fiend for Kumo and Space Drake. Who will get their kill on their fiend first? We shall see. Fade coming out, going to deal almost, well, 150 damage, still not lethal. This is a thick carry. And of course, remember Kumo, uh, well, not doing the Bane or Brax strats, which got Paces the Frog to kill on Tia earlier. Gonna take a little longer to do so. Very early. Kinda surprised they're not at least, you know, one cheeky throw of the the Bane Sword. Although they might not have the Bane Sword on them anymore. It's totally possible they disposed of it. That is Blaze and it is hitting hard. Ooh. Nearly takes down the Black Mage. Only 21 health left on that. Meanwhile, Carrie's still standing. These fiends, what scaling did they apply? Jeebus, that is a carry down. That space trick hits levels 19 and 20. Kumo going for Brax now. Trying to get some Cure Fours out to keep the rest of the party up while he continues to do so. Odron having promoted, as well as Haste of the Frog, Odron's going to get some level 3 magic for the uh, or for that uh, ninja. That lit 3 is nice to have, that temper is extra nice to have. Although they have the power bonk, that's probably going on the night. Interesting. We see uh... is going to the uh, market and uh, recruiting away a black mage. It looked like, or was that bringing the black mage back up? Um, thought it was a revive. Either but I'm way, not familiar with that menuing. <laughs> either way, that was a visit to the most shameful, shameful clinic in the world, the Gaia Clinic. The Gaia Clinic. It's just a bit worse than the Honorak Hotel. Oh, I hate that place. Meanwhile, Jesus the Frog strolling up to Carrie. This is huge because this is the uh, last fight needed. In fact, uh, Odoron, knowing that, is going to, to or going to Gaia, dealing with that fight, and I move Princess Sarah out of the way. Well. Odoron is waiting for Hastos the Frog to clean up that last fiend fight. Gonna check these Cardia lock chests, or these uh, Tof lock chests. We are really in the end game moments, or at least our early shots to Topher. Kumo and Space Drake just need to find that last fight with the Water Fiend. Oof, Rub Bones. That's uh, yeah. painful. Got that uh, life spells though, life to a level two, very, very handy to have. Then carry is, goes down. That is full on go mode. I expect Odoron is gonna save and go straight into Topher from here. Obviously has to kick Princess Sarah out of the way. And a few bats. Aces the Frog going for a bit of a run into Cardia Marsh. I'm assuming knows where some good equipment is that Odoron picked up and going to get that before diving down to Tof or to Topher. Is there which, a ribbon uh, in there? Odoron is doing. 5130 for our first dive into Topher for Odoron. Odoron coming back out. Did he come out to save? Perhaps. Maybe use a house and get some magic casts? Quite possible.
Getting a cure shirt, and what do we got here? A cabin. Nothing too spectacular out of those final check chests to validate the run. Gonna put that cure shirt down, uh, see if it can be equipped as armor. Looks like the black shirt is the black shirt, and uh, I don't see him putting that cure th care two shirt in place of that opal bracelet that's on his white mage. As a high roll opal bracelet. And Jesus the Frog going for that incentive ribbon with the herb turn. Yeah, most definitely wanted that. So I can I can see that. That's definitely worth the the, uh, the time and effort there. Yep, doing the same thing, putting the Barak shirt on as armor, that protection from uh, I think that's space magic. Uh, yeah, time. Or time. Zap. Whatever zap is. Ooh. Lord Fizzlebeef saying that Massa Plus One located in Volcano Armory. Squiggle Left is an interesting name for that particular place. That is a huge find and definitely something we did not see any of the other racers go for. Otherwise it would have been very much noticed before. But uh, that is the biggest of big sticks that we have found. Unless the X-Cal rolls substantially up, and even then, that's just good for everything that isn't chaos. Uh, speaking of, we've got a speed bump Mark II located by Odoron, our first Fiend II fight. These fiends can roll up, these fiends can roll nasty. Or these looks fiends like could roll just... pansy. So let's find <laughs> out which one it is. Well, it looks like Lich took a swing early. Let's see what round two has in store. Given that van Vanilla Lich has a nuke, this is a little less threatening than Vanilla Lich 2, so... Yeah, I'm not sure what the... Uh, what equipment Odoron is rolling with here. We know we have the shirt on the Black Mage, the Opal on the White Mage. Uh, you've got our multiple pieces of uh, elemental armor, shields, and swords. I know they have that the Aegis shield, and I believe in plus four or five ice or fire shield. Uh, so yeah, the armor is good. The swords, the katana, and uh, I don't know what he's running on that knight, though. It looked like maybe ice? It is possible. Uh, Space Drake picking up the incentive ribbon. As Jesus the Frog joining his teammate in to the Topher as uh, Odoron is getting ready for carry two. What does the Snake Lady have in the past? Fire three, very elementally thematic. Night swings before the bass gets off, that's always fun. That is not a katana. I believe that was a... Was that the... That was not the katana. It was not. It was four hits for four damage, though. Ooh, nuke coming out. Bane not going to do it. Saber going to try and help with that fast cast that did, did get down before the Black Mage went down. Life 1 is enabled in battle, but I'm assuming get Cure 4, trying to keep that Knight alive. Lit 2, doing some ship damage. Bane comes out not effective in this situation. 5 hits for substantial damage. That's a good sign. Gonna go for Bane, gonna go for Swing, gonna go Cure on the White Mage. Bane does not pull off. Cure 4 gets out. Lit 2 again, puts that Ninja on a knee. But that is 300 plus damage off 7 hits for the knight, doing chunks of damage. Cure 3 coming out wants to keep that black spell or that ninja up for evasion and to avoid having to use a life cast spell. That was a stop taking the shutting down the ninja's dodge ability. But uh, those bane casts were not really going to be the answer to this. I assume slow 2 hits the ninja, not affecting the knight, which is the important one. 6 hits for only 100 damage. This is an absorby carry. Yeah, this fight is dragging on. And it's not even Tia 2. White Mage down to 18 hit points. Fire Cured up just in time. 
Indeed, and getting that kill before we had the chance, uh, getting through that list of spells pretty quick, honestly. He did not want to see that nuke come around again. Now, it does kind of hurt that Life 2 is on level 2 along with Fade, because that is one of the most powerful sweeper spells that White Mage can use. Yeah, it saves some heal spells or heal pots to be able to use Life 2 to bring it fully up out of, or to life out of battle, but those Fade casts could be very valuable in battle. Meanwhile, he's just the frog, yeah, taking on Lich too. Making quick work. Didn't even need to bring attention to it. As Kumo picking up that Saber Bonk out of Ordeals, and uh, Space Trek actually checking out the uh, Sky 6 pack. Didn't see this picked up by any of our other races, I do believe. And finding a couple Opal Shields. Plus five, plus five, but not anything worth taking. As Hastings the Frog makes a two carry two, we know there's a nuke. Odoron taking that fight against those six waters, I don't blame. With that much experience to be had, if you got the spell cast and they don't lose the party members, that's not a fight. Not uh, that's a fight worth taking, especially knowing how deadly these fiends can be. Here comes Kraken. Does Odron try and hide the white mage? Yep, the black mage down on Hastings of the Frog side, as as was for his partner. Oh, is that after the nuke? Indeed, we do. Oh, life in battle, choosing to bring it back up rather than use healing for the rest of the party. Meanwhile, Hastings the or Odron is in center, going with uh, evasion and speed, going for bane strats with that ninja, not bothering to swing a sword. Invis comes out, fast comes out, gets nuclear. That's uh, more radioactive waste dumped on the opponent or on the team. But that knight standing tall, still 470 hit points, has a fast, has a sa or has a uh, saber bonk cast, and an abyss stack. Should be raring and ready to do some damage as Hastings the Frog deals with carry two and is now on the Kraken floor as well. Bane comes out, does not get the kill, six hits for 206 damage. Brack shirt, no effect. Oh, oof, oof, oof. That is a dead knight. The good news is that uh, Haste of the Frog, or that uh, Odoron was using a cure for on the white mage, has a chance to bring that ni or that knight back up, but now the knight is on its knee. Any, any spell that does damage will bring it right back down. That is the worry about the life one limit on the life in battle. No quick save revives. That is the black mage down as well. That damage poison, oh, and the ninja is down hard. This could be a wipe unless hard life cast order swirl. Nope, that's going to bring it back down. Cure for against a dead body does not revive the status element of death. Life does, however, but it does not bring it up for survival. <laughs> and nuclear, and that is our first wipe out of Topher for Odron. That is how dangerous it can be. <sighs> As Odron re-dives into Topher, Hastings the Frog fighting a party on his way through Topher on the seafloor towards that Kraken new fight. And uh, Space Drake over on the other team is fighting the Kraken one fight to unlock access to Topher for his team. Kumo, meanwhile, is doing some desert running trying to find a valid grind. Finding some steak. Uh, Odoron. Gonna go back, probably get some more provisions. Save on death means uh, when you bail out of uh, Topher like that, you uh, all the stuff you used is still gone. Indeed, that is, uh, you save the loss of your consumables. Also, looking to pick up some different weapons. That Cat's Claw is hilarious, because that could actually be used on the Black Mage if they really wanted to do it. Improved huh? Cat's Claw True. Black Mage. I mean, That's I would. Right. <laughs> mm. Might as well have it. Oh my word, they're buying the Cat's Claw. Is it going... Nope, it's going on the Ninja. It is a Cat's Claw rolled up, so... 
Lord Fizzlebeef in chat advocating for his normal chant of speed and power, power and speed. At this point, you, uh, Lord Fizzlebeef most likely have his ears pinned back, blinders on, going full speed ahead. Whatever wall gets in the way would be pounded through. Oh, yes, and Phoenix chiming in there, and RNG Jesus is a is blessing, so. <laughs> you always need a little bit of RNG luck. Kumo is the first one on that side to get into Topher. Uh, as Jesus the Frog gets into that crack in two fight, we know it is a horror, and Space Drake picking up the Saber Bonk, making sure they have as much equipment as they can before going to join the rest in Topher. Getting the Roost Stick out with the Fighter up, or the Knight up front in Viz 2 on top of the Roost Stick cast. Fast, I miss where the Roost Stick came from. Nuclear comes out, does a chunk damage, does not take any one member down. Bane does not affect, going for that Cheek Strat, gonna go with the buff with the Saber Bonk, gonna go with the uh, in Viz 2 again. Switching off evasion for the knight itself. Gonna go over the Bane and Brack. Did not get an effect. That ninja is down. Amazing. Ooh. The white mage survived the punch that the black mage or the ninja dived in front of the night mage or the white mage to save it. I'm gonna assume that's what happened. Invis comes out more stacks. That's uh, five equivalent Invis stacks on that or on cube the red or the uh, knight, and that's 700 damage. It looks like. Off that swing, poison bring that black mage down to a knee. Uh, we know that world's coming out soon. Yeah, and another nuclear. This is a very crackable crack, and that's the swirl that takes down the black mage or the black mage. 999 damage, a huge chunk. You only got the cure four. Trying to bring that white mage back up. 650 damage in. Get the cure four off before the nuclear. That brings the white mage up into survival range. Gonna cure four the knight. Get that cast off before the nuke. Was that nuclear? Nuke? I'm confused. It was. Either nuclear. way, that's okay. Well, that's Jesus the Frog getting the kill on Kraken two, where his team may had failed and making it on to Tia two as his teammate makes it back to the fight with Lich 2, uh, Kumo dealing with crack, or with uh, Kairi 2, and Space Drake first dive into ordeals. This is a hard race, and it's it's bounce, one bounce away for either team. Haste with the Frog, first of all, Tia 2. Would you all like right. to take this one, Red Mage? what they got. You got Fast going off on the night. Ninja doing four hits for some damage. Tiamat throwing ink at the team. Wall on the black mage, which is going to be helpful. Was that wall on the on the knight? Yeah. Giving that buff that only the one ribbon on the white mage has to everyone who doesn't have the white mage's ribbon. Well, thankfully. Because uh, Tiamat letting loose with Bane there could have taken out a whole lot more. Seven hits, 245. Fight, fight, wait, Brack. Three hits, three damage. Nine hits, what's that, 100 damage? And Brack, Brack, Brack. Five hits, 44. Brack ineffective. Seven hits, 216. The, the ninja has been muted. A little mute touch on Tiamat. Well, that's just Night annoying. <laughs> Night attacks, one hit, 139. Brack, oh, Nuke comes out, takes out the ninja. Everyone else still standing. Wall doing its job. Looks like life coming out soon. And the uh, black mage is gonna oh fire three saying Tia keeping the ninja down. Seven hits for 156. This is gonna take a while. Like Tia with fire flames, radioactive or otherwise. 
bringing out the saber bonk. Still hoping for some Brack on the Tiamat. Ice 2 doing chip damage. Black Wizard down on the knee. 60 hit points. That's not uh not ideal. Eight hits for 627. That's more like it. Still Eight hits three of five. Teams. Brack still not cutting it. And down goes the Black Mage. Six hits for 522. Six six three ninety eight down goes Tia two. With that white mage still up, that is life and life two available. Saving the life two, going with the heal spells in the life one off the knight. It looks like makes sense. You want those fades for chaos. Yeah, Kumo about to reach the Tia fight as well, or the Tia two fight as well as Odoron is on Kraken's floor. And uh, Space Drake on the way to care to carry two. Uh, this is an interesting. We have to see both racers on a team finish to finish ahead of the other team. So, so far, Haste is the frog with the lead on the overall, and uh, Odoron the lead on the second party member. And it is Fiend Palooza as Jesus the frog. About to draw up on the chaos. Indeedly do. Let's see what chaos has. Ooh, we have the Garland Chaos Party Pack. One of these is in fact chaos. The other, uh, the other eight are Garland. Uh, the question is, do these Garlands have something evil? Because uh, looks like so far it's just punch. I've seen Garlands that had instant kill magic uh, before, so. We know that we've seen Nuke and Nuclear already off on two other fiends, uh, both of which are being fought by Kuma and Odoron, respectively. Mm, we've so, seen Swirl as well. It is less likely to be on Chaos, but we also haven't seen things like Cure 4 or Zap, and there are a good number of Nukes and Nuclears in the pool, we never know. Lit 2 coming out from Chaos, it's chip damage, it's uh, basically a meh action. Haste of the Frog also using this chance to buff given the fact these uh, garlands aren't doing much damage. Uh, that said, the more times these garlands have a chance to swing, the more time is wasted. A single sweeper like Nuke or Fade could save a substantial number of turn actions. All those garlands look like they have 300 plus health, so they can go down <laughs> fast to a single Fade. 10 hits, 600 plus damage, though. That is a lot coming out of that ninja, it looked like. And we have located the Garland. That is the or the Chaos, I should say. That is the front center. Uh, that information is true for all of our racers, so Haste of the Frog going to tell Odor on that, and knowing that only needs to target that one character to actually get the kill. Uh, that mm -hmm. said, probably going to wipe the board anyways to save those encounter times. Uh, wall coming out on that ninja from the White Mage. Going to go ahead and fade... Temper the ninja, going to stack some bu some buffs on the ninja. The knight already stacked up and buffed. Nope, the temper goes on the knight for extra swings. That was five hits for, I believe, either 100 or 1,000. Either way, a lot of damage. That's a zap coming out. Speak of, does not get any kills. Nope, I believe everybody has a wall or a ribbon at this point. 857 damage. This knight is doing plenty of damage. Chaos, however, is noticeably thick. Ooh, only four hits that time. Going with the swing, swing, wait, wait strats. Then, oh, that is there a kill. Goes. Our first racer finished on stream. Haste was the frog. Obviously, this leaves Odoron currently fighting Tiamat 2 uh, to finish it up as Kumo also fighting Chaos. Getting that sweep route to reveal which one of our fighters here, which one of these garlands is in fact Chaos. And that is the final reveal, getting some buffs in, Invis Stick 2 coming out, Saber Bonk coming out, Lit 2 doing chip damage, Kumo's not unhappy to see that. Gonna get all the fast casts and buffs out before going with Swing Swing, Fade, and 
mm, deciding going with more temper out of the Black Mage, not having a good sweeper, not having a level 8 nuke. Getting that swing out 670 off that swing from the knight. Going for more buffs, going for more swings, 5 hits 550, 8 hits for 8, nothing special from that ninja. Meanwhile, Space Drake on the way to Tia 2, which uh, Odoron is still plowing through. Temper coming out, hard 4 coming out from the White Mage, going to deal some damage. Swings again, 1, 1,100 plus damage there with that knight. That knight is doing the vast majority of the damage, as one would expect from the big stick wheeler. Uh, that knight also, I believe, has got the Masa. Kumo and Space Drake did find that Masa, whereas uh, Haste of the Frog and Odron did not. Swing the Masa, that is terminated. That is another kill on Chaos. It comes down to Odorod, who has just cleared Tia 2, and Space Drake, who is fighting Tia 2 to bring up which of our teams takes the win in this second match. It's going to be tight. Would you like to take the fight, Odoron? All right. Here we go. Black Mage up front. Sad. Opening with uh, Ice 3, I think. And the Garlands come in swinging. Ice 3 going to do a lot of damage on a few of them, but not going to clear the amount needed to uh, keep any of them down. Invis 2 goes off. Ice 3 goes off on the Ninja. That's a, a nice tactic. Get that out of there. Try to clear this up a little bit. Meanwhile, the knight sabers up. We're getting the fast cast off. We're getting the invis off. And more saber. Invis too. Get the stacks of invis going. Fast goes off on the knight. Another ice three. This should clear everything up. Revealing the, the true chaos. Chaos casting lit too. For little bits of damage. Everybody looking pretty good with HP, except for the Black Mage up front. More Invis stacks with the Invis 2. Temper coming out on that Knight. Knight swings, 6 hits. I missed the damage. More Temper, more Temper. More Invis. Nope. He switched that up. And a Saber. So, temper. Temper, Saber, Lit 2 comes out from Chaos for a little bit. Ah, the wall on the ninja. Keeping people safe. We're going to temper up some more. Wait, fight. fight. Whoa, six hits for 900 something damage. I think like 924. Wait, wait, hit. Zap comes out. Oh, it hits the one guy that you did not want to have it hit. Good thing we got the life in battle. Chaos misses the black mage. We got to try and cure the fighter, get him some more hit points. Hopefully Chaos doesn't cast lit too. We get it off in time. Rub doesn't work. Knight's back up in fighting shape. And it's just, wait, wait, hit. Five hits, I think that was 200 something damage. Things are rolling fast. Chaos misses, nine hits. I think that was another pretty high amount of damage there. Five hits, 900, chaos goes down. Get your GG's in the chat. As no practice, no, oh man, what was it? <laughs> no practice, no problem, oh man. Uh, Davian, what was the full name of the team? <laughs> uh, no preparation, no practice. Or... Okay, here we go. No prep, no practice, no problems. So that's uh, that's game two for them, right? Indeed, we do. All right. 
Meanwhile, Space Drake taking on Chaos. Already cleared out the the garlands. Oh my gosh, I don't <laughs> I don't recognize any of these sprites at all. Uh, yeah, I his character black. his names of his characters are said so Fighter Thief, White Mage, Black Mage, you can correlate with that. And that is Black Mage down. Ooh. It is a common Success. courtesy rule that the uh, alternate sprites have to be named what character type they are so people can know what they are. Oh, I remember. All right, five hits, 943, that's it for Chaos. Get your GG's in chat for Space Drake. Oof, that was pretty tight at the end. Everything was really close. It looks like we got some people in the waiting room. Let's see about bring them in, get uh, some words from our racers. Welcome, racers. Uh, GG to Hazers the Frog and Odoron with the uh, win on the day. GG. And likewise, yeah. very good race, very close race, Kumo and Space Trace. Or Drake. Oh, we uh, like to uh, keep it. <laughs> uh, so, oh. uh, how about those weapons? Oh, yeah, I love <laughs> all the weapons. So many weapons in that seed. All the weapons. Uh, we did eventually find the Masa, I think it was a plus one, in the hairpin, because I'm the kind of psychopath who will actually check the hairpin. Yeah, we did not. I had a silver plus five the whole game. Oh, that's what that was. Yeah, and then I went and got those cat claws that were very hit or miss. I, I didn't even check the uh, weapon shops for that. Uh, I, I, and also, of course, I'm feeling a little like I let let the team down through like inefficient menuing or something, because good lord, 90 seconds is close. And I close. know that my, like, there are aspects of my play that I easily could clean up, but and this is a good sh showcase of the, the sort of things that, that you can clean up. My menuing could be a lot faster, you know, my, my decision making a little bit sharper. Oh, the interesting thing about this co-op is uh, you can kind of balance that out because your imperfections are balanced out by the trials and tribulations of your teammate. Because yeah, there was plenty I, of trials and tribulations on both sides. <laughs> I was going a little slower, taking a little more time to think after Tia and during Chaos because I knew that I could have finished in 10 seconds. I had, I had to wait for Odron because he would, was right behind. So I could take my time and not worry about being as fast as possible in the menus. Mm -hmm. Then I was stumbling to try and catch up. <laughs> well, to be fair, that was your second dive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you were well ahead of me in the way in originally. Yeah, I, I admit I did pop open once I saw how dangerous they were to see what the different theme fight twos had, and uh, let's see, carry two had spell slot two nuke with a fifty percent or with an over fifty percent chance of casting magic. Uh, Kraken two had nuclear poison swirl and nuclear with a fifty percent chance of casting ability. He had the other nuclear in, in his. Oh yeah. my god! I, yeah. I, I don't think any of us saw that. I saw the nuke punch nuke. Yeah, Tiamat had ink nuclear, or ink nuclear, ink nuclear, but also had Bane nuke fire three ice two. Uh, that was plenty. And then of course Chaos had the other nuke behind cure four, but was all more was much more punch happy than spell happy. Mm -hmm. I I'm glad to see that then. Yeah. Oh, that was a <laughs> nasty Topher. It was. I've noticed that uh, this particular flag set, especially in practice and whatnot, we've 
seen a, a tendency for the flag set to spit out some especially nasty Topher's. I think partially because the boss HP is set so high, so the, the bosses have a really good chance of going through a whole lot of their move list. Oh, mm. yeah. In this case, Chaos was 4,500. Mm-hmm. That sounds about right. T.S. felt like he was a punching bag. He he took a lot of damage. They all did. Even Lich, too, I was surprised when you guys took him. Was yeah, Lich taking a was long like time. 1,500-ish? A little less than that, but uh, yeah, above a thousand. Yeah, what I well, am curious about is, uh, what you, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, it was twelve thousand for Lich two, fourteen or just about fifteen for uh, Carry. Kraken had eighteen six hundred or eight uh, uh, hundred eighty six, but also had uh, uh, sorry, and uh, Tiamat had two thousand seven hundred thirty five, but had a hundred and thirty two absorb, which was actually more than Chaos. Oh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm wondering is uh, what MP3 thought about the uh, wild chain of, of events that led to getting a floater. We were tearing our hair out trying to Actually, find Actually, it wasn't bad because we had the hint for the bottle and the fane. And then we had the hint for mm. the floater behind the bottle. Right. So yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we find the slab, we know right where to go. So that I wasn't too bad. Hmm. Yeah, well, you guys have that there. lined up really well. Yeah, it was great to build a walk out of there and be sitting in the desert as soon as the floater popped up, hopped in the ship, straight on to Gaia, found Topher. You also had pretty early access to the early magic. I mean, yeah, you had level 8 and 7 and what should have been Cres or Cardia, or Canaria, I should say, but uh, you did find level 2, 3, and 4 magic. And level one magic, and it was all pretty much good. Mm -hmm. It was it was good. It wasn't great. It was all good. One saving grace was the locations of life one, life two, uh, temper, and fast. Of course, I forgot to buy life one and temper. This is one of those seeds where I, I find, found myself wishing I'd taken a red mage instead of a black mage. But with the way the uh, towns can get randomized you really don't know if like, something that you're going to need is behind uh, either Black Mage a access or, like, Black Wizard promotion. Mm. Yeah. I, I tried running... In earlier practices, I tried running with a Red Mage, and it just ended up in, in a disaster, like, so often. Well, what I found is I'm very comfortable with Thief, Fighter, White, Black, and mm -hmm. since I'm dedicated to not doing any practice. I'm just going to do what I'm comfortable with and then see how it works out. That's basically what I did. It was like Thief Fighter White Black. It's, uh, it's a strong party. Especially for this flight set. Nice all-rounder. Well, you hit all those unrunnables. Yeah, those unrunnables. Uh, I'm glad you didn't run into too many of them Topher, but holy crap, when I was uh, diving one of the dungeons, it's like, I keep on running into unrunnable... Oh, the Marsh, Marsh Cave. Bringing unrunnable wolf packs. And, and then, of course, there were the uh, the very gaseous, like, bones in uh, oh. a few of the levels of Marsh. I, oh, I, yeah. I, I think those got uh, both Kubo and I at least once. I never even saw those. All I saw was the two packs of unrunnable waters on Kraken floor in Topher. That was harder than Kraken. You were very lucky then. Those uh, those uh, baning bones were out for blood. The bones had bane, squint, and rub, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> it was disturbing how, how brutal it was. But hey, if you only find one or two packs like that and it's not in the overworld, you're happy. This is no. true. Uh, well, thank you guys for coming together and, and putting this on. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for the... Uh, and the I, I, I also like, learned a lot more. It is always great to have 
all the racers, either on stream or not, just enjoyed competing in the community and in the event. That was a oh, good yeah. time. So, might as well go have for our final thoughts. Let's uh, start from uh, Kumo. How do you think? Uh, it was a. This is my first time doing a co-op, and it was very interesting. You you have to think a little bit differently on how to tackle things, and it it requires team. And it was it was really fun to, to uh, play with Space Drake. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. And mm -hmm. hopefully next next year we can. Uh, uh, get a little Maybe bit we can get some sweet revenge. <laughs> oh. uh, Jesus the Frog, on the other side, how'd you do? Oh, I, I do very well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got Final it. I, we covered all of it. Um, it was a good race. It was a lot of fun. I never really expected to do well in these, but even more so than solo tournaments, co-op tournaments are just a ton of fun. You're hanging out, you're chatting, you're having a good time. I really recommend everyone who plays FFR or who wants to play, just grab a friend or even grab someone you don't know. Audra and I never spoken before we teamed up for the co-op. So just get someone, get in there, have a good time. Well said, uh, Space Drake. Your thoughts, final. Uh... So, as the team name kind of suggests, I just cramered in, into this thing literally the day before uh, signups closed and was like, well, why not? Let's give this a shot. And uh, uh, it, it's still been a lot of fun. And uh, uh, as I said, I learned a lot more of, uh, about playing the rando, e e even beyond you know the things I already knew from previous tournaments. And... Uh, it was a lot of fun and a very different experience. I'm still impressed with how slick the co-op uh, 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 mod is uh, uh, for FFR. I, I, that, that's something I never would have imagined could be put together in a hundred years. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, thank you uh, to the FFR team for, for putting that together and... Uh, Thank you to uh, the, the stream team for giving us a uh, uh, chance to show off in front of the community once more. This was a this one in particular was a really good race, and a, 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 if uh, if my time in this particular tournament has to end, th this is a pr pretty good one to uh, 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 to end it on. And meanwhile, I, I'm just looking at the Lafinian ladder and like maybe even like. Uh, Speed gaming live or something and raising my eyebrow. Well said. Very well said. Glad to have you in. You did an incredible job in the race. Uh, Odoron, last race on stream. And what are your final thoughts? Uh, co op is just a lot of fun. Actually, being able to talk to someone instead of just talking to the voices in my head the whole race, it's great. But they're so helpful. One of the voices in your head was it was also on stream. It was it, well, that was in your ear. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for uh, coming together, re-streaming it, uh, keeping the audience entertained while we fumbled around with horrible, horrible weaponry. <laughs> Well, at least you had a only bur only blur things, no uh, malices on the car on the parties. That that probably helped. Yeah, minus hit percent on that fighter would have just been awful. Oh god. Yeah, that would be bad. Oh, that's when you switch the master to the. Oh wait. Well, uh, after for that. Uh, Thank you very much for our runners for competing. I uh, love to see Jesus Frog, Odoron, your team, zero preparation involved with your uh, joining together and racing. But you are moving on, it seems, with the win over your, or your opponent's Kramering. Uh, thank you for actually making that note or explaining to me. I did not know what Kramering was, but the moment you said it, I realized, oh, that's Kramering. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> 
Yeah, no prep, no practice, no problems. Moving on in the co-op tournament. Uh, Red Mage, any last words? Uh, no, um, it was a great race. It was really close, really fun to watch and work with. Um, so good job, everyone. Okie dokie. With that, I have been Thavian Hawk. My co-commentator today has been Red Mage with our restreamer Luffy DV. Thanks again to our racers. Thank you for everyone in the community for joining to watch this. If you want to join the community, if you're new to the idea of uh, Final Fantasy Randomizer itself, go to FinalFantasyRandomizer.com. Check out the randomizer there. Finding our Discord on that site as well. You'll have all the information, all the welcoming of this community. Join up. Try it yourself. Uh, all you need is the ROM and the ability to hit enter a few times to get in and playing. Uh, thank you very much. Y'all have a very good evening.